What rating will Lionel Messi have in FIFA 21's Ultimate Team? I'm your boy Viva La FIFA and amazing that you're all watching the top 25 La Liga player rating predictions for FIFA 21's FUD. So we have a lot of amazing players for you to sign up in your squad builder or if you want to go for the career mode you also see what players are the best in the Spanish La Liga. So lean back, relax and enjoy the video. If you do it don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe for more and put the notification bell and if you click the i button you can vote in the poll about the rating of Leo Messi. Starting off with the number 25 and that is Arthur Mello. The center midfielder of Barcelona is linked with the move to Juventus so there is still a small possibility that he will not be a La Liga player so then there is room for other players to make their debut in the top 25 because well as you will see a lot of them are missing out. Isco not here. Gareth Bale not here because they did not good enough to keep the spot in the top 25 but Arthur Mello, he did. The season of Atletico Madrid was quite disappointing in the La Liga and Gimines, the center back of Uruguay, was injured for 50% of the games. But after their heroic victory against Liverpool at Anfield, they reached the quarterfinals of the Champions League and, well, maybe even going to win it in the end. Gimines, I think, will stay 85 rated. His season in the La Liga deserves, I think, a downgrade. His season in the Premier League deserves maybe an upgrade, so I think EA is settling in the middle. His teammate Felipe, who made the summer move from FC Porto, is much, much better this season than Gimines. He is now an 84 rated center back. We can argue about going up to 86, but I think EA is taking it step by step. Felipe is an amazing center back. He is great with the ball on his feet as a passing player, but also defensively, he is a rock you can build your defense around. One of the highest rated fullbacks in the game for quite some time is Dani Carvajal. The 85 rated right back of Real Madrid will keep his rating. I don't think he will go up. Yes, we can argue about Jordi Alba being 87, so he can also be 86 or 87 in FIFA 21, but I have a feeling that Jordi Alba will go down and that Dani Carvajal will keep his rating. Coco Resurrection is an amazing center midfielder for Atletico Madrid. You can also play on the right mid position, but as a center mid, I think he is a very more usable in the FIFA game. Coke to get with Saomni Guest is the beating heart and soul together with Thomas Porti of the Atletico Madrid squad and Koke that he is only 85 rated that is disrespectful if you compare him with players like Isco, Casimiro and Tony Kroos. From 85 we go to 86 overall with Nabil Fakir the playmaker of Real Betis Sevilla. He was now 84 rated in FIFA 20 he will at least go up to 85 with an opportunity to go up to 86 he played as a right mid collected in from cards. He played as a cam collected in from cars. So in the FIFA game, everybody knows Nabil Fakir had an amazing season and for that reason, he is rewarded with a nice upgrade. One of the biggest upgrades in this top 25 goes to Thomas Party, and that is totally deserved. The man that is heavily linked with a move to Arsenal in a swap deal with Alexander Lacazette is now 82 rated. That is really not fair. Together with Wilfried and Didi, he belongs with the top three CDMs in the world looking to the interceptions of the ball from the opponent. So just like Ndidi, I predict a huge upgrade for Thomas Party. Jordi Alba was a very high rated fullback and he totally deserved that because he was the top assistor for a long time coming from a fullback that is something really special but this season it was not a top season for Jordi Alba we can be honest about that he was okay but nothing really special if you watch his performances and compare that with players like Juan Bisaka, Trent Alexander-Arnold in all honesty we must say he did not do good enough to stay 87 rate. Some people say Frankie de Jong was not good enough, but Barcelona didn't use him on the good position. Griezmann is the center forward, played left wing. Frankie de Jong is more a CDM, they used him as a box to box midfielder. So you can't blame Frankie de Jong that he didn't reach all his heights he got with Ajax Amsterdam. If they want to use him in a perfect setting, they should play with two CDMs, one attacking mid, and then he can play together with Sergio Busquets in the same role as he did for Ajax. Nonetheless, he still had a good season with a lot of special cards. I know that a lot of my fans don't like Danny Parejo as a card in FIFA because he is way too slow, but that has nothing to do with his real life stats and performances. He is the penalty and free kick taker of Valencia and the playmaker of the team. He has been linked with a move to Barcelona for quite some time, but he is staying faithful to Valencia and that is also worth something. Parejo had amazing stats so far this season. He missed a couple of penalties 
but for the rest, good season, this is an upgrade. What goes up must come down. Gerard Piquet for a very long time belongs with the best center backs in the world, but defensively, he is slipping up more and more and more. I think his teammate, Simon Lenglet, is it Simon Lenglet? Well, just call him Lenglet. He did way better this season than Gerard Piquet. So Lenglet will receive a massive upgrade before you think Viva, you're hating Barcelona. Well, watch this video. You will see more upgrades for the Barca players than downgrades, but Gerard Piquet, 33 years old, turning 34, is just normal. Where will Saul Ninguez play next season? He is heavily linked with a move to Manchester United. I will keep you up to date on my channel about transfers every single day, but also these videos are so fun to make. Saul Ninguez was, in my opinion, one of the best players for Atletico Madrid for quite some time. And once again, just like Koke, I think he is underrated by FIFA if you compare him with central midfielders of Barcelona and Real Madrid. One of the biggest downgrades will go to Luka Modric. The Ballon d'Or winner of 2018 is going downhill step by step in his career, turning 35 in the forthcoming FIFA. That means EA normally is hitting those players with massive downgrades. In real life, Valverde took his spot in the starting 11 alongside Casemiro and Toni Kroos. Cruz. That is not a shame. Valverde is in the prime of his career and Toni Kroos is also in the prime of his career. Luka Modric, well, his career's days are counting down very fast. He is linked with a move, by the way, to Inter Miami. Center back Lingle, as I told you, will receive a massive upgrade because if we make realistic ratings and Gerard Piquet goes down to 87 or he was 88 rated in FIFA 20, Lingle should be up there. He defeated Samuel Umtiti for a starting spot and Lengle, well, from his debut season on, he was there and that is a massive performance. Joining Barcelona, a huge team, but nothing could care less. He was there from the start, reaching high levels, and he never let them down. Center midfielder Casimiro started to score goals this season. Amazing long shot rockets. Of course, his main task is to be a CDM, taking balls away and being important in the balance of the team. But if you can add a couple of amazing goals as well, you're even more important for the team. Respected by his teammates and Zinedine Zidane, Casimiro could see an upgrade coming. One of the few players that did much better since Cristiano Ronaldo left Madrid in 2018 is Karim Benzema. Benzema was always playing in the Roberto Bobby Firmino role as a target man and being the supporter of Cristiano Ronaldo as Firmino is for Mo Salah and Sadio Mane. Since Ronaldo left, he became the main striker and he never let them down. You can say whatever you like about Karim Benzema. He is not selected for the national team anymore for France because, well, he was accused for bad things in the past. Never thought he was accused and also was confirmed he did it, but that's a different story. Benzema him up on the pitch just scored a lot of goals. My favorite center back already for FIFA 21 is Rafa Alvaran. He will be super expensive. We can't go around that. But Varane this season, just like Lingley, was better than his old maestro behind him. Because Sergio Ramos did okay, but Varane was incredible. So with a pace upgrade plus an overall upgrade, Varane looks like a monster. I don't think there is any legend or icon card that is getting close to Rafa. Alvarana. Imagine this guy even with a shadow card. He will be freaking unstoppable. Also the goalkeeper Thibaut Coutois. He has revived himself this season and that is well chapeau for him. He did very disappointing in his first season and everybody was calling for Kayla Navas. Navas got his chance but in the end Zidane went for Thibaut Coutois and the future of Real Madrid because he was younger. Navas is loaned out or sold to Paris Saint-Germain. Not quite sure but Coutois he did much better in his second season season and that shows his class. Also Tony Kroos had a pretty disappointing season before the last one but he also revived his career by playing great. They call him Tony Kroos control well cruise control actually because he is so composed on the ball. You can give the ball to Tony Kroos and you know for sure he's passing it to a Real Madrid player even when he is pressured. Luis Suarez could be replaced by Lautaro Martinez but if that will not happen Lautaro is still the man of Inter and Suarez can stay the striker of Barcelona but if Lautaro is joining them there is a very big chance I'm afraid that Luis is going to the bench and at his age you don't want that. You want to play games he needs to recovery from a bad injury but maybe he will get stronger 
recovering in the forthcoming season, so Lotaru will be on the bench, who can say it? So Juarez did great in the games he played, we all remember that incredible back heel goal. Sergio Ramos was 89 rated and I think he will stay 89 rated, yes. His pace, defending, physicality, it will go down step by step as he is aging, but he scores almost every single penalty, so his shooting can go up, so that is a little bit of balance. Defensively, he is getting weaker, but on the ball, Sergio Ramos is still an amazing center back. One of the biggest downgrades is going to Aiden Hazard. Everybody expected wonderful things when he signed for the Galacticas after Bernabeu, but injuries were throwing him back all the time. He was not fit after returning from holiday, so with that, he was always one step behind of his teammates, picking up knee injuries, picking up muscle injuries. Well, we can't actually blame him. You can say that, but I think if you are a professional, you should prepare for the season the best way possible. Hazard didn't do that. Well, this is the consequence. Not playing games. Vinicius has been chosen above him multiple times, so Hazard needs to find himself just like Thibaut Courtois did after a disappointing debut season. The first player we find in the top 5 is Sergio Busquets, and if you don't get it, you don't understand it. It looks like Johan Cruyff talking like that, but Sergio Busquets is the beating heart and soul of the Barcelona team. You might think that's Lionel Messi, but Sergio Busquets is way more important. His passing accuracy is still the best in Europe. He's not super creative, but still very important. His composure is very high on the ball. Defensively, he's also a maestro in choosing the right positions to take the ball away. It is not a coincidence that Lionel Messi always demands that Busquets is with him when they are training 5-5, to 6-6 on the training pitch. So Busquets, if you don't understand that he should be 90 rated, I think look at the game more closely. Antoine Griezmann from 89 to 90. Is this realistic? Well guys, if you take in consideration that he played outside of his normal position but still got so many goals and assists, we can say Griezmann did great for Barcelona. Barcelona does it all the time. They did it with Philippe Coutinho, they did it with Frankie de Jong, they did it with Antoine Griezmann, signing players for 100 million pounds and using him on a totally different spot. Griezmann has experience with Real Sociedad playing down the wing, but the last seven years for the French national team and Atletico, he was always the center forward playing around a strong target man. If he can get the opportunity to do that for Barcelona, I expect even greater things. Number three is Marc-Andre Ter Stegen. The goalkeeper of Barcelona is in my top three of the world. Who else is in there? Well, I go for Jan Oblak and Alison Becker. That is my top three. Let me know your top three in the world for goalkeepers, guys. Drop it in the comment section down below. Ter Stegen, he is composed, his handling is great, his reflexes, plus he is great with the ball on his feet as the first attacker in the build-up play for Barcelona. He is super important in their philosophy. The number two is Jan Oblak, and sometimes I don't think it's fair that the goalkeepers have such much higher ratings than players. For example, Oblak is 92 rated, and a striker like Luis Suarez is 89 rated. And, well, we can argue about that, but this is how the goalkeepers work. Jan Oblak is the best in the world. That is my opinion. I told you with Mark andre Ter Stegen, tell me who you think is the best. But if you see him play against Liverpool at Anfield, you know what he did all season long for Atletico. And he is doing that for three or four seasons in a row. He is linked with many other teams, but 100 million plus for a goalkeeper that is a jackpot price. Nowadays, nobody can afford. So the Atletico fans can be happy with Jan Oblak as their goalkeeper. We are finishing the episode the same way as we started it. What rating is fair for Lionel Messi? If you click that i button, you can vote about it. Plus, let me know it down in the comment section. Plus, tell me why he should be 93, 94, 95, 99 rated. Let me know it in the comment section down below, guys. And give a thumbs up if you think Lionel Messi should be the highest rated player in the game. Messi is still fabulous on the ball. Defensively, he is taking steps down. He is saving his energy for if the team has the ball, they are finding Leo Messi and boom, there he is. This season, he played with an injury. If you keep that in mind and look to the stats of the season, it is insane. With an injury, he is still going one-on-one. -on -one. That means every single game, 
he gets a goal and or an assist. That is something amazing, an injured player doing that. Now, after the Corona break, I think Messi is getting stronger and better than he ever was. So I expect great things when the La Liga will be finishing. Do you agree, guys? Give a thumbs up, subscribe for more and put on the notification bell. I thank you all for watching, wishing you all a very nice day. And as you know for me, keep it cool, keep it real. And ciao for now. Maybe we'll fall.